Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make a coloring book page um, and how I do it. And I've done one of these before, at least one before. So I'm going to do another one and this is with a different photo. Uh, so how I usually get my photos, um, there's a few different options. You can have your own photo or I go on to uh, Pexels, which you see pexels.com. Um, and I downloaded this image from this girl and I liked it because, well, I want to do a quick tutorial and there's no hands here. So the hands take a bit longer. So um, I downloaded uh, the picture and I brought it into Adobe Illustrator. I placed it on this canvas here, on this artboard. And so now we're going to turn it into a, um, a black and white uh, coloring page, a line drawing. Okay, so the first thing you just need to do is just make sure you lock your uh, lock your layer because you don't want it to move anywhere. Okay, so it won't move uh, as long as you're happy with that position, and I'm happy with that position. So next, you do a new layer, and this is going to be the outline. Okay, so you'll call this outline. O U T L I N E outline. Okay. And click on the outline. And what we're going to do now is just draw the outline of this shape of the girl. So you'll need to go to your um, pen tool. Um, I'm just going to zoom in here. Uh, go to your pen tool. And we don't want a fill color. We just want a line color. So just uh, click on your uh, your empty box here to make it no fill. And then let's click on our line. And uh, let's change the color because I want this to be a color I can see. So I'll just turn it to red. Um, and then we're going to just start drawing. So click on your first anchor point, And I usually start here on the top of the head. Now you just click on your anchor point. OK, so that's left click on your mouse, drag. And then you click on your next anchor point. And then don't uh, leave your finger on your mouse button and then pull. OK. And when you're happy with that curve, then you can let go. OK, and then what I usually do, I just click again on this anchor point with my uh, with my left uh, mouse key. And then I click on that. And now it brings everything back to, well, to zero. And now I go for my next uh, my next anchor point and I shall do this maybe here. And then I pull. And then again, click on the anchor point. And then find your next place that you're going to do your anchor point. And I think I'm going to do it. So let's do here. OK, let's do here. Click on my anchor point. Let's go here. Click on my anchor point. Let's go here. Click on my anchor point. OK, so I'm going to work my way around the outside um, of this image. Now, I've, I'm kind of uh, used to the, this is a lot of practice. If you are not used to the anchor or the pen tool, um, maybe practice with it before you start doing uh, doing a full image. But it is just click and then drag. And by the way, I'm not using any other hands. I'm literally just using my mouse. So I'm not pressing any shift or control. I'm just doing it like this. I click. OK, I click. Now my finger has uh, is no longer on the mouse button. And then I click my next anchor point and then I pull while my finger is still on the anchor uh, is on the mouse button and then I let go and then I click again. I let go and then I click my next anchor point. And while my mouse is still on, I 
while my finger is still on the mouse button, I pull and then click again. Um, anyway, okay, I'm gonna keep going. Click, pull. Okay, so I'm gonna do this, complete this, and I'll come back to you when it's done. Okay, so now I'm finished doing the outline. Let's zoom out and see how that looks. Okay, looking good, looking good. Um, okay, and let's go to our layers. Let's turn off. There we go. Okay, that's perfect outline. Excellent. Now, next we're gonna do a new layer. So let's lock our outline layer and do a new layer. And now we're going to do uh, draw in our details. Okay, so let's just call this details. And let's zoom back in. Um, again, you're going to use your pen tool. Okay. And uh, this is good because now we don't have to have any uh, closed, uh, closed shapes. So this is just drawing with my pen tool. So I'm going to start with, um, I'm going to start with the hair. I always usually start with the hair because it takes me the longest. So if I zoom in and click on the line and let's go. When you do the hair, you have to try and f make it uh, wavy and let it flow. Make sure there's no um, hard edges here. So I'm going to start off here. Click on the top. Give me a follow through line. I don't know. Let's do this and then let's do, let's go about maybe here. Okay. And then uh, when I want to end that line, I just press enter. Okay. So let's do another one. Let's go. Let's go here again. Follow the flow. And I'm going to pull this in here and pull it around to give it a nice curve. And now I'll just press enter to end that line. Okay, here I go again. Follow this hair line. Um, let's bring this to this line. So it's on top of that line. That's why it highlighted. Um, and now enter again. Okay, and again, let's do this. And I'm doing this, um, always keeping in mind that it's going to be a coloring book page. Um, so while it might not be exactly the way the hair is, it's not supposed to be exactly. The photo is really for guidance. Um, and always remember it's going to be a coloring book page. And always also think that not only is it going to be a coloring book page for people to print off, but also imagine it's also going to be a coloring book page for people to probably digitally color it in. OK, so just keep that in mind when you're doing this. Um, and I will explain to you why. It's because when you're doing it, uh, coloring it in on digital on your iPad, sometimes you need to have uh, closed shapes so people can drag and drop. Um, the color into a closed shape. It just makes it easier when coloring on certain apps. And that's why um, I'm kind of doing this. Okay, let's go to next one, next one, next one. Um, no, I have fringe or her bangs, what the Americans say. Uh, let's say, mm, Oh, let me think oh, to this. Let's go here. And then let's draw these bangs. 
Okay, first of all, let me do the face first. Um, okay, so I've kind of put down the main lines down here, okay? Um, so there are the kind of the main lines, I think, so we can see it's a face. And I'm going to continue on to add more detail. Okay, so uh, this is my outline of my drawing. As you can see, there's the photo, and there's my outline. Okay, so it looks very flat, very simple. Um, you know, I could add more detail if you want, um, but we're just gonna go with this now for my outline. Now, it does look very boring. So this is where we kind of have to clean it up and tighten everything up. So we're kind of finished now with the photo. So we can turn that off. And now what I want to go is go into our lines. And as I said before, keep in mind that this is going to be not only possibly for um, a coloring in page where people print it off, but also um, a possible digital, uh, digital coloring page where people color it in on their iPad or their computer. And so we should try and uh, close as many of these lines um, as we can. And this is what I'm going to do next, okay? So you just click with your, um, your direct selection tool up here, the white uh, arrow. And then all you need to do is just basically click on the anchor point and then pull it into the closest line, okay? And you can use here your uh, handles to just do any more curves you wanna do. Okay, so I'm going to do this for uh, for the image and I will fast forward it.
Okay, so I think I have closed all of those lines as much as I can. Um, yeah, so as you can see, if anyone does do digital coloring with this file, all the hair is closed off. Um, if they drop a color in for the skin here, it's all one, okay? But that's all closed off from the hair and the clothing. And then the clothing down here is also closed off, so that looks okay to me. Um, now it still looks a bit flat, and this is where a uh, quick little change happens. And this is all about your line quality. And line quality is usually very important. If you are an uh, artist, you'll know this. If you do sketching, you know this. If you've ever done animation, it's really important in classical animation. So um, it's your line quality. So at the moment, there's not much line quality here because it's all uh, uniformed. It's all the same uh, line and the same width. And so I'm going to change our line quality here. That's going to bring a bit more life to our image. And all you need to do then is go to your stroke over here, your stroke panel. And now if you can't find your stroke panel, you go to window and then just go to stroke, which is down here, window and then stroke, okay? And then you click on one of your strokes and let's click on this one, okay? And now, as you can see, if you go up here, it's a uniform. And I don't want it uniform, I wanna change it. I wanna change a bit of variety. So I wanna give it a tapered look. And let me see, I can choose any one of these and I will pick, let's try this one with profile five. And as you can see, suddenly the line quality has changed. So it's light at the end and thick in the middle. Okay, and you can change these, um, try different ones. So let's try thick at the top and it comes down tapered at the bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna do this to, I'm gonna go around and do this to all of my lines here to give it some kind of a lift. Now, normally when you are uh, drawing, and this is something I learned when doing studying animation, is whenever a line goes behind uh, something, it's usually it's thick, it's thick. Sorry, not tick, that's my Irish accent. It's uh, thick. So for example, we will have, let's see. Um, yeah, so for example, this one here. So this line is going behind this hair. Um, so you could do something like this. So it's thick at the bottom, it's coming out from here. And then as it's curling, it's getting thin because it's coming towards the camera, I guess. Um, so you can keep that in mind too when you are changing your line quality here for your image. So I'm gonna go around and change the line quality for all of these. Okay, so here, as you can see, um, the original line was like this. And what I wanna do, I want to have it thick at this end and thin at this end. However, when I click on this uh, line, you'll see it tapers in the wrong way. So I want this to be reversed. So I want it to be thick here and thin here. So in order to switch that around, you just go into your properties panel. So you got window, Go to Properties Panel, Window, Properties, where are my properties? Okay, so the properties from my Stroke Panel, and then you find your Width Profile, and you'll see it here, and then you will just reverse. Click on these two triangles that are kind of facing each other, and you click, and as you can see, it's changed now. So it's thick here and thin here. And let's try maybe do the same for here. So click on this and let's see how it goes. Yeah, so I want it to be thin here and thick here. So click on my line, go over here to my properties panel and then just do flip along on this side. And there we go.
and we have the same problem here. I want to be thin here and thick here. So let's flip that, click on my line, go over to my properties panel and flip, flip along. Okay. Okay, I'm kind of happy with that for what I want right now. And um, and let me tell you why. Okay, so it looks, you know, it's quite simple. I'm gonna, um, let's highlight everything. Go to my layers panel. And uh, let's click on everything. So I'm just turning off my, uh, my lock on the outline panel, on the outline layer, sorry. And that's control A. So that's click on everything. And then I want to turn this black. So just click on this and just pick a black. Uh, let's go to color swatches and black. Okay. So as you can see, now it's black outline, which is what I want. Um, now there is one more thing now before we start adding assets and um, giving it a background and adding extra stuff. So what you'll need to do is if you just click on um, your outline layer, okay, click on this and you'll have to fill this in with white. Okay, if you don't fill it in with white, well then what is gonna happen is um, anything you put on the image behind it is gonna see go through. And we don't want that. So now it's white, it's a solid white. Okay, and now let's go back to our layers. And now we should just lock all of our layers here. And now you're gonna start adding assets, okay? Now, these are assets that you can draw. Um, you can, you know, use from um, some open source materials online, um, whatever your choice is. Um, I usually draw my image here and then to make, um, I either draw my own assets or I will use assets from um, various online websites that are uh, copyright free or free to use commercially. And uh, the one that at the moment it, I really love is Creative Fabrica. So if you go into Creative Fabrica, um, as you can see, this is Creative Fabrica, and this is where I get a lot of my assets now. Um, so yeah, you have everything. You can really whatever you want. So you can get some, you know, some daisies. You'll see they're pretty cool. Um, you get fonts, whatever you want. Uh, and as you can see, commercial and full print on demand usage allowed. So, so you can use these in your own artwork, and you can also sell your work if you want. Um, just make sure you read the fine, fine print. But yeah, you, so you can see including commercial license, you've got technical support, um, limited downloads. That's just for the account that I did. So I've paid for the, uh, for the year. Um, so it just means um, that I can just download everything whenever I want. And it's kind of cool. I used to just do download one thing at a time, um, which was fine. That worked too, whenever I needed stuff, but it was just worth my while to get the, um, the full membership. Um, as you see, there's so many different options here. These are nice. Um, they have loads of things. I love the brushes too. The brushes are amazing. Save so much hassle. And over time, you end up collecting a lot of work and a lot of, a lot of assets. And that when you're doing your coloring pages, literally, you can spend maybe an hour doing a coloring page. And then, you know, the faster you get, the more assets you have, you could just be doing it in 10 minutes. So they're the two main things I've been using. So the Creative Fabrica uh, for my assets and then Pexels for my images. Um, and usually it's Pexels or Pixabay and it's Creative Fabrica or Creative Market that I use for, to get any assets if I want to speed up my work.
So here, uh, let's do um, a new layer. OK. And now I am going to uh, import some of my um, assets. So you got to go. Let's go into my library. So I've saved some of these in my library. And um, yes, yeah, so these are kind of very cool, very quick to do library. OK. So what I usually do is I just drag and drop. Um, let's see. I've also got some brushes, uh, some new brushes I got today from Creative Fabrica. And let's go in. I save some of these. Um, let's see, I have, now if I get my brush, I'm going to paint this on and let's see how these look. Oh, cool. Perfect. Okay, this is from Creative Fabrica and I will put a link to all the brushes I use here and all the images, the elements I've used here, I will put a link in. Um, in the description uh, below this video. So um, this one is really cool because they have lots of different ass brushes here. Let's try. There we go. Okay, I'm going to explore uh, with some more of these assets. Uh, let's see. Let's try this one. And the great thing about brushes is I love the fact that you can literally draw any line and then just add your brush. So click on your line and then click on your brush and it takes on the shape. Um, let's go to my layer. I want to do some background. Let's do some background images. So click on a new uh, layer. Let's bring it to the back. And I've got to bring it back behind my outline, remember? And um, OK, so let's try. I've got a few more brushes here I want to try. Uh, let's see, what else do I have? These are really great to play around with because while um, you can try just different strokes because you're really making it your own image now at this point. I'm very fussy. Oh, let's see. Maybe not too fussy. Yeah, I do like those strong. Um, let's go back to the front. I want to go back to the front layer. Something is missing here. Okay, I'm going to do a new front one. Delete this. Now I'm going to make a frame. Let's do a frame. So I'll go over here, go to my rectangle tool. Um, I want to round rectangle though. So let's do a round rectangle. Just do a rectangle here. Very simple. Um, it's going to be a black. Do I even need that? And now uh, let's pick a, a brush. I've even got some Celtic knots, which I got from Creative Fabrica as well. Um, 
Yeah, I have an idea for a whole Celtic theme. Uh, let's see some... No, it doesn't really work with the same style. No, it doesn't really work with the same style. Okay. Okay, I'm not going to bore you to death. I'm going to just go work that way on this and choose my own style or just choose my own shapes. And then I will come back at some point and show you my finished uh, piece. Okay, I think I'm happy with this for now. Again, it's something you can just play around with endlessly and it is cool. I just like it, I love it. Um, as you'll see, um, I finally settled on this kind of interwoven like vine and I got this from the Celtic Knot Brushes. Um, and yeah, if I click on any of those, but yeah, I like the vine and um, I just put a square All I did was just do a rounded square and then I dropped on my vine brush onto it. And then if I want to just change the arch, you just click on the corner dot here and you just bring in your arch. Anyway, I'm happy with this for now. Um, I hope this was of some benefit to somebody. And um, yeah, I will do more. I motivated 2023 i'm motivated to be creative and hope you like it <laughs>